Gravity is no reason for levity. And even if it is, William Skinner of Miami still believes in his invention, which he calls a gravity power machine. Um, the, next, uh, the next presenter, the next presenters uh, include Aaron Murakami and uh, Mark uh, Dorsten, yeah. And they're gonna be talking about the William Skinner gravity engine motor, or gravity powered engine. I believe it worked exactly how Skinner said. And I have every reason to believe that it works exactly how he said. And uh, I'm aware of other mechanical uh, amplifiers that produce more net mechanical work than the mechanical work going into it. Uh, the way that it's leveraging itself, leveraging gravitational potential, and how it's redirecting forces to, to have more net forward work than uh, is working against it, or possibilities, I should say. This is a William Skinner machine. Um, one of my little obsessions that I kind of got fed up with on the forum because I'm tired of people telling me that the top input lever is circular, it's elliptical. <laughs> but it, that's a whole other story. But in any case, part of the mechanism here is that this is a massively overunity mechanical device. It's one of the most clever things that I've ever seen. And um, what happens is that there's a lever rotating a weight, which rotates another weight down here, and all these disconnected little deals. But what happens is any of the reaction in the system whips this weight on that graph, uh, the graph paper, uh, like if you whip it in one direction, the weight swings in this direction, which assists it to continue to rotate in the same direction, which means most of the reaction in the system is actually going to produce forward work. So you wind up with more mechanical work than what it takes to put into the lever on the top. Uh, and if you look at this frame, it's Frankenstein's bride. You'll find welded in holes, you'll find butt welds, you'll find about the only thing that's original are the screws on the feet where I leveled it. But one of the unique things about the Skinner machine as I got into it is you can't scale it down because the, um, the length of this arm right here, which you can, we can call it whatever you want, but from here to here is when you get it shorter, the, the, that subscribes the arc. You guys can all come up and take look at it and take pictures, but this little thing here that makes it go back and forth because when it's on the outward one, it goes faster. When it comes through the back, it goes slower. So you get this disparity of speed. Well, the only way to reduce that change is to lengthen the arm. So you'll actually find a hole here, and you can see how much I increase the size. Elliptical machines. The top machine's purpose is to drive the bottom machine. All of your output is out of the bottom. So that means, and these, these are just previous drives, and... Um, uh, and what I was trying to do is reduce the, um, uh, the changes in acceleration. So I'm building all sorts of things where uh, I've got, I have a small fortune, by the way, of uh, linear bearings, if anybody uh, is interested. I've got drawers full of those things. Um, and then the, the thing is, is it doesn't, for, so if you say, oh, I'm going to invent it, I'm going to patent it, and I'm, it has very, very little market value, I think, as an inventor, because it's so easy to duplicate once, you, once somebody makes one. You put the measurements on, and anybody can build it. Hi there, thank you for your talk. Do you know, um, either in your machine or any others that have been replicated so far, do you know if anyone's made a measure of the total um, output power and horsepower? Uh, I have done it. Uh, it there was a, uh, it's, we didn't hook it up, but I've actually got a bicycle handbrake, a mm. disc brake. That's a bicycle disc brake, and uh, we had a spring balance on it. And we were playing with it, but I haven't done anything formally. I was playing with it saying, gee, this is better than last time. Mm. So if you hook it up and you can take and take that bicycle brake and put a spring on it, or I think Peter or, or Paul Babcock told me to put a motor on it, and then you can really do some accurate and formal. I would be very interested to see the measurement with, the, say, for example, a, a dynamo or alternator connected to your chain drive at the yeah. bottom there. I mean, it's ready um, for well, that, I, and then with a the load. Yes. Um, um, on that and just to see what the output how, the output horsepower really is to what the electrical power is you're putting in. Yeah, I've got a small watt meter on it and we had a tachometer on a couple of different parts and then you can see uh, where the chains come across and it's all set up. You know, so-called free or uh, over, -unity, over unity device is that all the work being done has to be done in a way to where when the, when the work is being done, it goes to recreating a new potential difference. Okay? 
that's how you allow gravitational potential to come in to do work. That's the Bedini machine. That's virtually every single thing is that work has to be done in a cyclic way, some pulsating way, and all the work that is being done is going to so-called regage the system. I think that that's a John like to kind of use that terminology. I think that's more technically a term in like magnetics and stuff like that. But any work that's being done to spin that weight, uh, any work, any loss goes to regaging itself or resetting itself in a way to where you create that gravitational dipole so that gravitational potential can come in and do work over and over and over. So the work, yeah, the work just has to reset a new potential difference. So here, the reason this works, when this is stationary, the weight sitting here, not swinging, is a balance, at a balance point with this weight here. And what happens is, is as this swings in the gravitational field, when it comes down to the bottom, it adds the centrifugal force to its weight and that's how it can lift this side. And I th this, is what, this is exactly what the ellipse in this system is doing because you have these accelerations and decelerations that's changing how much inertial energy is, is oscillating the gravitational field. And that's exactly why this works.